coming up, the voters have spoken and the results are coming in. We have live team coverage of the Super Tuesday primary. A Channel 6 exclusive, a family saved from an icy creek, meets their rescuers for the first time. And the Dow slides 375 points. What's behind it? Channel 6 News starts right now. Channel 6 News is everywhere. Live, the most watched news station in the capital region. This is Channel 6 News at 11. A victorious Al Gore dunked Bill Bradley in Super Tuesday Democratic primaries nationwide. And on the Republican side, George W. Bush racks up six states to Maverick McCain's four. Thank you and but McCain bless. loses a big one in New York. Good evening, everyone. The presidential primary votes are adding up across the country in 16 states this Super Tuesday. It's a make or break night for the candidates. The voters selecting more than half the delegates needed to win the nomination. Let's go right to the numbers now for New York State. First, the Republican side deemed too close to call all evening. But CBS News is now declaring Bush the winner in New York. York with 62% of the precincts reporting. On the Democratic side, never a contest with three quarters of the vote in. Gore with 65 to 34% lead over Bradley. For a wrap up now on how things are shaking out nationally, let's go straight to New York City. Bobby Harley standing by live with the latest there. Bobby? Well, all the analysts had predicted Super Tuesday would decide who stayed in the race for president. While no one's dropped out, tonight certainly belongs to George W. Bush and Al Gore. As Super Tuesday polls close around the country, the projected results show big wins for the frontrunners. It looks like a clean sweep for Vice President Al Gore. Massachusetts, Missouri, Maryland, Connecticut, Maine, Rhode Island, New York, Ohio, Georgia, Vermont, all go to the Vice President, who praised his opponent Bill Bradley even after weeks of a bitterly fought battle. I think that anybody who has heard Bill Bradley throughout this campaign has come away from the experience moved and touched by the strength of his commitment to healing the divisions in our country. Soundly defeated, Bill Bradley did not announce what his plans are next, but his speech made it seem like he is near the end of his campaign for president. He won, I lost. And on one level, I agree with Vince Lombardi when he said, winning isn't everything. It's the only thing. For the Republicans, frontrunner George W. Bush watched on television as he reclaimed his early lead, clearly pulling ahead of John McCain in votes and in delegates. McCain needed a sweep in the Northeast. He did take Massachusetts, Connecticut, Vermont, and Rhode Island, but Bush picked up Maine and Maryland. At Missouri and two key states, Georgia and Ohio, that's when McCain almost to win to stay in the running. Step one in politics, as you know, is to unite the party and unite the philosophy and then go out and find uh, voters who are tired of Washington, D.C. I intend to do that. And he has a very good chance of doing that. The projected wins for two of the biggest states voting today, New York and California, are now in. And both of them go to the Texas governor. Live in New York City, I'm Bobby Harley. Now back to you. All right, Bobby, thank you. And, of course, New York was seen as one of the two biggest tests for Republican John McCain tonight, California being the other one. Could he keep his upstart campaign alive against the longtime frontrunner, George W. Bush? Well, Darcy Wells is live in Albany now, where some of McCain's local supporters watch the results come in. She joins us live, and I'll bet they're not all that happy with what they're learning, Darcy. No, they are not, uh, Liz. In fact, it has not been a Super Tuesday here for the McCain supporters in Albany. They were glad, however, for the victories in Rhode Island, Connecticut, uh, Massachusetts, and Vermont. A bit surprised at the loss in Maine, and of course disappointed at the loss in New York. With me, I have Mark Quinn, the campaign McCain uh, campaign coordinator, and uh, for the 21st district. Mark, were you surprised at how close the race was here in New York? Actually, I was uh, a little bit disappointed with the results, but overall I've been very pleased that uh, we fought such a close race here in New York. And uh, in, in our district it was extremely close as well, so that was very gratifying for us. And what is the message to the McCain supporters here tonight? Where now do they uh, put their vote? I can speak on my own behalf and probably the majority of the Republican volunteers and will probably fall in behind Governor Bush. Um, come November. Uh, I know that'll be the case with me. And uh, I, our main goal will obviously be to keep Al Gore out of the White House. Okay, thank you very much, Mark Quinn. Quite welcome. And earlier tonight, we were over at the state Republican headquarters in Albany where we spoke to Congressman John Sweeney. He was uh, surprised as well at how close this race was in New York, and he told us why he thinks George W. Bush won. I think that's because 
Governor Bush came to New York uh, a number of times, certainly more times than Senator McCain did, delivered a message of hope delivered a message that lift the spirits of the families, the working families of New York, and I think that's going to uh, translate into a victory. I know it's going to translate into a victory in the state. And of course now the question is going to be where will these McCain supporters go? Uh, you just heard Mark Quinn say uh, where he's going to be putting his support. The other question, Brad, will be what about the independents who were supporting McCain? All right, Dorothy Wells reporting live tonight from the McCain State Headquarters in Albany. Thanks. And on to the Democratic side now. A familiar nationwide theme was repeated here in New York State with Gore trouncing Bradley, and it appears that Bradley will be doing some political soul searching now. And Tom Langford watching the results come in tonight with both camps. He joins us live from the triumphant uh, Gore camp where the supporters are gathered tonight in Albany. Tom? Well, there are some very happy people here at the victory party for Al Gore, a much more mellow party across town for Bill Bradley. But despite their differences, the supporters of both candidates now agree on a few things tonight. Number one, Bradley's campaign helped make Gore a better candidate. And number two, Democrats in the capital region will now come together. New York Democrats voted for Al Gore in overwhelming numbers. And seconds after polls closed, what Democrats, even most of those supporting Bill Bradley, had come to expect in recent weeks, became official. Al Gore is the winner here. I think he's made Al Gore a much better candidate uh, uh, because they've had to sharpen the debate. That's what a primary process does. The difference was Al Gore's got experience. Now, at primary night gatherings for both Gore and Bradley supporters, the talk is of unity. The wonderful part about tonight is that Bradley people will immediately coalesce with uh, Vice President Gore's people and come together as a unit to make sure we win in November. And I'm sure that uh, we'll all be getting together, all the Bradley supporters, uh, with uh, the, the Gore supporters, and we'll have a, a fine team going into November. As an example of that coming together, you just saw two brothers, Mike and Neil Breslin, during the primaries, they supported different candidates, but now they both tell me they're going to come together behind Al Gore. Back to you, Liz. Tom Lang for reporting live in Albany tonight. Thank you. In Massachusetts and Vermont, they turned out to be two McCain strongholds tonight. His victories fueled by independent voters in both those states. Let's look at the results from Massachusetts with 67% of the precincts reporting McCain has uh, more than doubled the total that uh, George W. Bush has gathered there. Independents made up two-thirds of the voters on the Republican side in Massachusetts. The uh, independents choosing McCain by a three-to-one margin. The Democratic numbers there, Al Gore winning easily in the Bay State. Four out of five voters there saying in exit polling that they approved of President Bill Clinton's job performance. In the Vermont race, there as well, John McCain finding his greatest strength among independents. They made up about half the voters in the GOP contest, and he won handily over uh, George W. Bush. The uh, Al Gore on the Democratic side, Al Gore, the vice president, taking nearly six out of every ten votes on the Democratic side in Vermont. And joining us now with some primary analysis and insight is Helen DeFossett, professor and the Democratic president of the Albany Common Council. Joining <laughs>